This is the INEO 1S DS. Wow. It fits in your pocket. Nope. It flips. Flip. It has two screens. Boop. It plays games good. Die, you motherfucker. And I like, really like it. Let me tell you why. Okay. Dual screen devices are a weird topic. Not weird like you, but no, I mean the kind of weird that's just hard to talk about. If you've ever owned a dual screen emulation handheld or even just tried emulating dual screen stuff, you know that it's not a cut and dry topic. There's lots of moving parts. Sometimes literally. Lots of ways you can do stuff and lots of hurdles to overcome. That's where the INEO 1SDS comes into the picture. It's a flippy screen handheld PC with a ton of power and two screens, and that combination opens up so many possibilities. You can use this thing for all sorts of stuff. A dual screen computer with a built-in control panel, emulation like DS and 3DS and Wii U, high-end PC games, low-spec indies, and watching TechDweeb on YouTube, as one does. Oh man, there's so much to talk about with this thing. I'm going to try not to let the video go on too long though. Like with most of my videos, I'm, I'm going to try to give you the big picture view of this thing and not waste your time. I would ne never do that sort of thing. There are two versions of the INEO 1S. This one is the DS version, the dual screen version, but they also have a KB version, a keyboard version. I asked INEO if they'd be willing to send me one, and I was hoping they would give me the choice, but they only wanted to send me their DS version. At first, I was a little disappointed. I thought I would prefer the keyboard version better, but in the end, I am so glad that I got the DS version instead, and we're going to talk about that. I also begged them to send me the retro power version, but the, the black one showed up. I'm not I'm not complaining, but like, d dang, that retro power version is so freaking cool. I really hope I can resist the urge to just buy that one. And that sh should be easy because it's expensive. However, the price will depend on the specs you pick. All versions are rocking the Ryzen AI9 HX370 chip. For RAM, we get LPDDDDR5X running at 7500 mega things per second. And you can pick either 32 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes. For storage, you can have one terabyte or two terabytes by the way of a 2230 NVMe SSD. The main screen is OLED, seven inches, 1080p, with a 144 hertz refresh rate. If you get the dual screen version, it has a second screen, which is an LCD, 4.5 inches, 1620 by 1080 resolution. It will also feature, quote unquote, the latest high speed Wi Fi and Bluetooth 5.3. It comes with Windows 11 Home and a 45 watt hour battery. If you get it during their early bird period, you're going to save about 200 bucks. Um, it starts at 1280 bucks. The, the dual screen of each tier costs about $20, $20 more than the one with just the keyboard. And as always, they locked the retro power version behind the top end spec. And that's $1,560. And that's the early bird price. It goes up after the pre-order campaign. <laughs> oh man, that's, uh, that's an investment. An investment in fun! And then you can pay your fun credit card bill. However, to play devil's avocado, this is an HX370 chip that we got in here. That is not a cheap chip. I mean, take a look at what other AI9 HX370 handhelds cost. So it sounds expensive, but this is a very normal price for a doodad with these specs. And if you don't want to spend that, then say it with me, dude, just get a Steam Deck. 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 On the front, we have our big main flippy screen up here and another second screen. There's a left stick up here and a D-pad down here. On the other side, we have face buttons and the right stick. Start and select over here. This button toggles between the quick settings and your second desktop. And this one is an Xbox home button. Volume up and down and a power button with integrated fingerprint reader. And this little nubby thing is a touch mouse with mouse click. And this is the INEO quick settings button. And this is a show desktop button. You can close the screen to keep everything protected. I like to think that when it's closed, the screens are kissing. Ooh, 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 ooh. Underneath, we have dual downward firing speakers. Ooh. And a headphone hole. Yay! 
Up top, we have bumpers and triggers and an extra function button on each side and a micro SD card hole and two USB 4 holes and an air vent hole. Nothing on the sides. Around back, we have some more vent holes for airflow. And these here are grippy pads that are replaceable. You get an extra set. There's a grippy texture one and a, a more ribbed texture one. That's the one, I, that's the one I like. Compared to most handheld PCs, this thing is actually on the small side. I don't think you'd be likely to carry this around all day in your pocket or anything, but if you have larger pockets and need somewhere to shove this temporarily while you open a can of root beer or win an impromptu pickle eating contest, you could probably get at least third place. It's got a good heft to it without feeling heavy. Some handheld PCs end up being too much for my noodle wrists to handle for long sessions, but this one feels like a good sweet spot. The ergonomic humps around back give my fingers a place to live and they're comfy to squeeze. The sticks in the D-pad and the buttons are all right where my thumbs expect them to be. The lower touchscreen sits close enough that I can tap menus with my thumbs without stretching or changing my grip. I can scroll and poke and subscribe to TechTweeb on YouTube while still holding it steady. It feels really good no matter what you're doing. And like with all flippy screens, one of the benefits is they just, uh, just more comfortable to play because the, the screen sits higher up. My eyes look forward instead of down, so my neck doesn't get even more mangled than it already is. Seriously, it, it's like a bendy straw at this point. The actual controls are actually lovely, actually. These sticks are teeny tiny little sticks and they're so cute. Awesome input quality. These are TMR electromagnetic joysticks whatever that means. My only gripe with the sticks is that inside here is a little rubber skirt thing to protect from dust. And a few times that actually popped out from inside the shell. Easy enough to fix, you just really just shove it back in there. But it happened to me like four times in the last week, so I figured I should mention it. The D-pad is super interesting. It's a very shallow D-pad, as you can see. It has clicky micro switch style inputs and it's quite accurate. No false diagonals, however, it's also great for fighting games. It feels a little bit weird being so shallow, but I got used to it very quick and after using this for a while, I've come to love it. Same thing with the buttons. Shallow and clicky, but they feel really good. And uh, and the bumpers and triggers, they're stacked and they're a little bit more narrow than most handheld PCs, but I like the way they feel and that the triggers are hall triggers with amazing input quality. They, they don't make me good at games, but at least they don't make me suck any more than I usually do. So, and the sound is uh, pretty good. D downward firing speakers, which isn't ideal, obviously, but the actual sound is good, so it, it kind of evens it out a bit. The screen, however, is amazing. I'm 93.7% sure that this is the same screen that we got on the iNeo Pocket Evo. That's what my intuition tells me, and it's usually right, except for that one time with the Squirrel and the RC car. The second screen is fine. It's a 4.5 inch screen, 3.2 ratio and 1620 by 1080 resolution. And I'm pretty sure that it's the exact same screen from the iNeo Pocket Ace. <laughs> it feels like iNeo cleaned out the factory closet and built a new toy out of spare parts. And I respect that because that's also how I cook. A flippy doodad lives or dies by the, uh, the flip, the hinge. How well does it hinge? And I don't know about the longevity. I don't know how, how well this thing will do after like 5 million flips or whatever. I can say that this feels more like a laptop hinge than a handheld hinge. It's firm and solid throughout the entire range and the only snap is right at the end when it snaps to 180 degrees. I can basically put this at any angle that I would ever want and it stays there. I, th I think it feels awesome. I also like that it can sit on the desk like a little mini laptop. When I'm using this thing at my desk with a Bluetooth mouse connected that is so much more convenient than using it in handheld mode for the, the fiddly stuff. And it's like it has its own built-in handheld stand. Like a little TV for hobbits. Actually, on a desk, this can easily replace a desktop PC. It has the power and you, you don't need a dock. Just drop it down and plug it in and use it like a mini PC. And then grab it and go when it's time to hit the town or the couch. Let's be honest, it's the couch. It ships with Windows 11 Home. Um, I have no idea what the Linux potential is, but I'm actually fine with Windows here because the software that they gave us to make use of this screen is amazing. Check this out. You got a second screen stuff going on down here, and then it can become a control panel with the push of a button at any time with zero delay. It works so good. You can do a ton of stuff down here. 
You can use it as a performance monitor and you get some performance sliders to adjust the power stuff on the fly. This quick assistant is some useful like uh, tools and shortcuts and stuff. Applications is uh, programs that you always want to have on hand. You can put whatever you want in here. Smart dual screen is cool. Uh, basically any window that you have open, you can tap here and it'll instantly resize it and put it on the lower screen. I love this feature. I use it all the time. Also up top, you have a button that turns the bottom screen into a laptop style trackpad. And also you have an on-screen keyboard, which is so handy. This is a full keyboard too, with all the function keys and everything you need to do Windows stuff. This is why I wouldn't want to get the keyboard version of the One S. Because with the touchscreen version, you get a keyboard for when you need it, but also so much more. Having these tools makes using Windows on a handheld a lot less annoying. And I don't say that lately, <laughs> considering how often I complain about Windows. You also have IS space for quick settings and the full app for a launcher and deeper tweaks, but most of it overlaps with the touch controls. Let's get into the gaming and let's start with dual screen gaming because this is the most unique thing that this thing can do. So obviously we're talking about Nintendo DS and 3DS and Wii U. And I'll tell you right now that no dual screen emulation is plug and play. You'll have to tinker a bit to get it working. So I'll, I'll kind of, I'll quickly show you what I did. All of my emulation on this thing is done through Retrobat. Check out my guide if you need a hand setting that up. Retrobat comes with all the emulators and it can download any emulators that you don't have on the fly as you need them. That was perfect for me because I use standalone emulators for all the dual screen stuff. Also, there is a magical application that I used called No More Border. This is a free Windows program that you can run and it gives you options for which windows to remove a border from and which screen it should be on and what size it should be. It will also remember your settings. It just runs in the background and it'll it'll remove borders for anything you've told it to all by itself. It's so good. It basically feels like it was made for this exact use case. I used Melon DS for Nintendo DS, Citra Canary QT for 3DS, and Semu for Wii U. And each of them had their own quirks to get working properly. I'm not going to make this a tutorial or anything and go deep on the methods that I used. However, I will put a pinned comment below that explains step by step how to configure the emulators to work exactly as I have them set up here. DS is great on here. You can use your finger or a stylus for the bottom screen and I have zero issues gaming like this. I actually really like it, even for precision games. It works so well. And obviously, you can also upscale the graphics. I mean, look at Metroid Prime. Have you ever seen a DS game that looks this good? I'll answer for you. No. 3DS is pretty dang perfect on this handheld. I enjoyed 3DS on that 1x sugar thing, but nothing has come close to emulating not just the games, but also the experience of playing 3DS games quite like the iNeo 1S DS for me. But upscaled to 3x resolution with perfect performance, perfect touchscreen implementation, save states, and all that good stuff. Wii U runs amazing, and it looks really good, and it's nice to have that second screen for the games that make use of it, but to be honest, the vast majority of Wii U games just uh, don't interest me. The best first-party games also came out on the Switch, and the best third-party games are all cross-platform and are all out on Steam, so... However, the Wii U is a dual-screen system, and I enjoy tinkering with it just because of that, and I'll, I'll probably still tinker with it some more. As for the rest of the world of emulation, I'm, I'm not going to go deep on performance stuff because I, I gotta keep this video shorter, and also, I have a separate video planned where I do a deep dive on the performance of the HX370 chipset, so stay tuned for that video very soon. I already made the graphs. Long story short, you'll be able to play any sort of emulation on here you want to. It's an HX370, so you're not going to be running into any performance issues. You can upscale Xbox 360 and PS3 and even that secret console that shall not be named. No problem at all. You know me though. I, I love the older stuff and I do indeed love that stuff on here too. Everything runs amazing, obviously, and it looks amazing on this OLED screen. And you can run the really retro stuff at super low TDP, down to like 4 watts or 5 watts. You'll, you, and you'll get a ton of game time like that. On the flip side of retro mode, this thing also has PC mode, also known as Steam, big picture. And everything you'll play on here is just lovely. 
Now, it's still a mobile chip, so on really demanding modern games, you're going to want to lower the settings and probably use FSR, but th there wasn't anything that I tried that I couldn't play. But in terms of gaming on the One SDS, uh, having that second screen on the bottom is so convenient. To see performance metrics and adjust the TDP or, or the fan on the fly, or even just to have a nice easy place to manage the apps that I have open, maybe have a browser down there to watch something while I game or look up stuff, all that second screen goodness. You get that here. The HX 370 is a beast at the high end. However, it's power hungry up there too. But you can get a surprising amount playable down at 4 watts or 5 watts. All the old school emulation and lightweight indie games are going to be fine down there. That said, this thing doesn't have a massive battery just 45 watt hours. And the second screen is super nice to have, but it sucks back battery too. So you'll be looking at four to five hours in a best case scenario, playing low end stuff with the second screen off. And then maybe two hours for mid range PC stuff or mid range emulation. And in a worst case scenario, uh, playing the most demanding PC games up at around 20 watts, that'll get you just a bit over an hour if you're lucky. And this chip goes above 20 watts too. That's a, that's a lot of juice. Also, real quick, the fan is actually pretty good. It gets loud, obviously, because it's a handheld PC. They all have loud fans, really, but the actual sound of this fan isn't annoying at all and it does a good job of cooling it. The device still warms up, you'll get toasty when you're playing high-end stuff, but it doesn't get into extreme thermal throttling territory or anything. And when you're not running demanding stuff, the fan is nice and quiet. So, do I like the INEO 1S DS? Yes. Do I recommend it? Actually, yeah. I mean, the, the price is a barrier, it's definitely not cheap, but considering the price of all the HX370 handhelds, it's not overpriced. And if you're in the market for a high-end PC handheld, this is probably my top pick, to be honest. And if you're not, then just, just get, get a Steam Deck, deck. Just, just get a Steam Deck. deck. It, it's not perfect, it has some quirks and the battery life thing, but it has everything that's important to me and that second screen. I, ju I just love having that there for all the reasons I already said. It's so useful, you have no idea. Well, I, I, I hope you have some idea, uh, or I didn't do my job very well. If you want this, the Indiegogo campaign is running for the next uh, 30 days or so, I think, and after that, you'll still be able to get it, but it'll be more expensive. And there's a link below if you want one. I'm always curious to know people's thoughts on weird devices like this, so please let me know what you're feeling about this one. But that'll do it from me for today. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.